Over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to take you on a journey that takes you beyond uh, reality. A reality in which the physical world and the digital world is uh, merged into a new uh, dimension. A dimension where the law of physics no longer abide and uh, where the only limit is actually your imagination. You of you here is ready to embark on this tour into the metaverse says I. Awesome, great. So please buckle up because I'm actually bringing you some content from the year 2050. What did he say 2050? Yes, I brought you some evidence. This is actually here the time machine, but it was an accident, ladies and gentlemen. My uh, colleague and I, Cindy, we were working on the quantum computer side of things of uh, that machine when she accidentally clicked on activation and well, the rest is history. She catapulted me back to the late uh, 70s and ever since here uh, working and contributing towards this topic of the metaverse. Actually, in the year 2050, I'm introduced as an EIL, which stands kind of an eternal intern of uh, live. And, you know, I translate it with, you know, somebody who is very curious and always challenges the status quo. And the beauty of that is, I brought those attributes back on this side of the world, you know, since 98 in tech, I did four startups, two exits, and uh, this topic of uh, the metaverse has always been something that has been driving uh, me. So I have a book as I was introduced, a podcast on this, I have the pleasure to be at UC Berkeley faculty with the brilliant minds over there where we discover and experiment in Web3 and the metaverse. And last but not least, last year, I did it again. I started my fifth uh, startup, Fidgetal, which connects the physical and uh, the digital world, all about this topic of the metaverse. So you can imagine that I get asked a lot this question. Tomaso, what is the metaverse? And I actually like to start out by solving some misconceptions of what the metaverse is actually not. And I break it down in five pillars for us to make it more easy. Proposition number one of what the metaverse is not, the metaverse is not a game. But actually, gamers and crypto aficionados were early adopters of uh, uh, this metaverse and they were enjoying gamified worlds and a better reward system. On the position number two, of what the metaverse is not. The metaverse is not NFTs, which stand for non-fungible token, or in simple words, unique digital assets. But those unique digital assets, they live actually within uh, this digital world. <laughs> On position number three, what is uh, the metaverse not? The metaverse is not an VR. The metaverse is not a virtual reality, but it is actually platform agnostic. It is uh, available through web, it is available through mobile phone, yes, you can also have an immersive experience through virtual reality, but the metaverse is actually achieving its peak of acceptance once augmented reality will be seamlessly integrated into our real life through mobile phones, um, smart glasses, also in the future smart lenses. Tomaso, what is the metaverse not? On position number four, I hate to bust this one. Ba, 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 right? The <laughs> metaverse is not meta because, you know, Google is not the internet and uh, Tesla is uh, not the car, right? And last uh, but uh, not uh, least, uh, the metaverse, ladies and gentlemen, is not a destination. It's not a location. It's not a website, a URL that you address but it's more an experience as an extension of our real life. The metaverse creates literally a new uh, dimension that allows us humankind to interconnect and to merge, become one with places, products, and people in a new way. And the beauty of this metaverse is that it is creating a new economy, the digital economy, which has an attribute of ownership. We will own what we have in the metaverse, which is our digital footprint and our time. Now, Tommaso, where do we actually stand nowadays with uh, the metaverse? So we have been seeing 
experiments over the last uh, two years, right? This is, for instance, the, the Metaverse Fashion Week, which uh, aggregates and puts, uh, uh, brings people together from the fashion industry, such as, you know, digital-born uh, fashion brands, as well as, you know, traditional brands, uh, based on the topic of fashion in an immersive way with digital assets at the center of this one version of things of where we stand. Another here example is uh, a traditional industry, such as the finance or the banking industry that is saying to their target audience, hey, dear customer, instead of visiting our website, instead of following us on social media, why don't you experience us in a more immersive way, in a more playful way, in this digital environment and we have there some fun rewards at the center of all this. Uh, I understood, Tommaso. Well, is this what the metaverse is? Well, kind of. We need to approach it and understand that the metaverse is in an early adoption phase. Or let me put it uh, in another words, it's, it's a baby, but it has the DNA. As an adult, as a, as, a, as a human being, it's becoming an adult. So in every innovation cycles, you have this beginning, which is called an early adoption phase. And in every innovation cycle, such as the innovation cycle of the social media, you have the first movers who pave the market for those, right, that then create the industry, such as, you know, for those who are in my generation, you might remember ICQ, the late 90s. Uh, I see the front row here, don't go by your age, right? <laughs> so Friendsters, right, which were important for a period of time, but they paved the market then for those to come, such as the Facebooks, you know, the Googles and the LinkedIn, who then defined the metaverse, right? Where I want to go with that is uh, that uh, while uh, the uh, um, past doesn't repeat and the history doesn't repeat, it does uh, rhyme. I like this, uh, this quote by Mark Twain. And uh, what I mean is that we are in an early adoption phase of the metaverse. We have early players that are experimenting in this new uh, um, industry called uh, the metaverse, right? And they're paving the market for the players that are then figuring out how we adapt the metaverse, right? I like to compare the year 2001, which in uh, the tech industry is known as the dot-com uh, burst, with this shaky times we have right now, 2022, 2023, right? And for those who have read the one or the other tech book, you know that, you know, Amazon, eBay, Googles came out of that dot-com burst, right? So all this to say the best is definitely yet to come. What are we actually embarked upon? We are moving from us as a humankind having a behavior to go on a website and read information about product and things, also known as Web1, right? which then matured into why should I seek and read things if I get it in the palm of my hands through the technology evolution, you know, social media and mobile phone. And now information and mo is moving into a more immersive uh, way of us uh, being a part of uh, this new content. So the future in the metaverse will be immersive and in the within this immersiveness we will be having ownership of our data, of our digital footprint, of our digital assets, right? And um, this is creates a very intriguing crossroad between, on one hand, technology advancements, and on the other hand, this next generation having new needs. And those new needs create new behaviors, and I will present you here four of them, that within the metaverse will, be, will become normal. When in the, within a couple of years, incredible but true, we won't be swiping through things. What did he say? Yes, but we will be experiencing in an immersive way content. Imagine an additional layer on top of everything that you are seeing here and you are part of it. This will be possible through so-called XR, augmented, or virtual reality, and you are within that, right? In a couple of years, as a behavior within uh, the metaverse, you won't be searching something. But actually, we will be having intelligent companions 
that are actually helping us to complete an entire job. What does it mean, Tommaso? What you're seeing here on the back end is something that recently has been really in the press. Most of you might have heard, except you were somewhere, you know, with no cell phone uh, uh, reception. Chat GPT, right, which is an intelligent companion that helps you solve an objective, not a task. What you're seeing here, I asked, I'm not any, a, a computer science engineer. I asked ChatGPT to build a website. And I said, I would like to have this logo. I would like to have this title. I would like to have a rating system. I would like to have a, a button with a certain color. And please, when I ho hover over the button, make it you know, jump up. And then ultimately, please also connect the button. So basically what I did, I just brought a prompt and this is what was created within 180 minutes, right? So the future in the metaverse will be served to us, right? The next one here, we want to be submitting content into the metaverse and especially we don't give up our rights. That is most probably the most fundamental thing within the metaverse because we will be having the right to own our data. You know, not just a f digital footprint, but whatever we are producing. Because nowadays, I don't know if, if most of us are aware, we don't know our data. We are pushing our data to third parties and third parties are actually making use of that in their benefit and increasing their value. And this with the metaverse, especially the decentralized metaverse, is going to be stopped and paused. And last but not least, when it comes to logins and when it comes to our personal data, we will be having uh, a trustworthy environment, the metaverse, right? Then whenever it comes to uh, logins or passport, we will be having in the metaverse a decentralized identity. Think of an identity such as a backpack. And you can put in this backpack your tokens, your digital footprints, your friends, your likes, so that it allows you a to own whatever you have in there, so it's trustworthy, and B, every time that you move from environment to environment, digital or physical environment, right, you have an individualized service based on the affinity that the environment knows. Well, Tommaso, what is it you wanna recap here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the metaverse, as long as we are looking at this such as a gamified environment eventually for gamers, right, that have to go on a website and log in, we are looking at the biggest transformational innovation the internet has had so far with minimalistic eyes. In other words, you don't play in the metaverse, but you live in the metaverse. Now, an unfair advantage that I have coming future back from the year 2050, right? I want to spoil you here what in my point of view the evolution is over the, nec over the next three steps on what is the, co uh, the metaverse going to unfold uh, like, right? We in the educational industry are going to embrace the metaverse because of two fundamental attributes. We are going to learn in an immersive way because immersiveness means it touches all our senses and we are going to be rewarded in the way we're going to learn. And therefore, we are creating number two, a new workforce, a workforce that will be working, living and creating new business models in uh, this digital and physical environment in a new economy. And there's a new economy ultimately because of the supply and demand of digital assets will surpass any GDP, which stands for gross domestic product, meaning the products and services on any territory. And this will shift into the territory of the metaverse that I abbreviate with GMP, gross metaverse product. And all the way from the year 2050, a quote of mine that I like of always wrapping up with, never forget where you come from because it keeps you humble. But where you come from cannot limit you where you want to go. Well, with that, I would like to thank you, and I'll see you in the metaverse.